Hi, and welcome to Goodwill Industries International's uh, Google Hangout for veterans and military families. I'm Brad Turner-Little, Director of Mission Strategy for Goodwill Industries International, and we are so excited uh, to bring you this very important Hangout uh, today for a conversation uh, involved and engaging I think we may have lost Brad. Brad, are you, you oh, there? Oh. There we go. Tim, thank you. We got it? Is that better? Yeah, we can hear you now. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Excellent. Well, good. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, my uh, uh, pantomime there to start us off for our Google Hangout. I appreciate your flexibility. Um, as we all learn new technologies, that's a good thing to, to sort of learn. Welcome to Goodwill Industries International's uh, Google Hangout, Google Hangout for veterans and military families. This week is Goodwill Industries International, uh, Goodwill Industries Week here in the United States and Canada. And one of the things that Goodwills are doing all throughout this week are hosting career fair related type events uh, in their communities to help people connect with work. Goodwill Industries International at the same time is hosting a virtual career fair, which is happening actually right now, um, to help people find jobs. Uh, by by using virtual career exploration tools, each one of the it's for three days, and each each one of those three days for Goodwill's virtual career fair has a featured population group where we really want to draw attention to helping employers um, access and take advantage of the great talent that's available in oh hi no longer I got a special note from my good colleague, uh, but I'm not muted anymore, so we're all good. Um, the special talents that come from particular populations. Um, and today's featured population is the veterans and military family community. And so we've got a great lineup today to talk, uh, to talk with each other and with all of us around um, the veterans community as folks transition from active duty status and move into civilian based work. Uh, we've got um, a, uh, a great roster of folks who will be speaking with us and just as a reminder, for those of you who are participating in the Google Hangout, that you can uh, submit questions uh, via Twitter, at Goodwill INTL, uh, so it's um, the at symbol Goodwill INTL uh, for Goodwill Industries International, or if you have a Google account, on the message board of the event page. Um, so we received some questions already from the public, and we're going to aim to make sure that we answer those questions as we go through today's conversation. So uh, to start us off, I'm going to ask um, uh, for Tim Norman to kick, to kick things off today. Uh, Tim comes from uh, DreamWorks um, and is the Director of Overhead and Technology Recruiting there. Uh, he's been with the company for five years. Prior to joining uh, DreamWorks, Tim was the Director of Recruiting for Crossing Technology Services and held, the director le held director level positions in human resources and staffing for film and digital entertainment companies like Media Ventures, LLC, and iFilm.com. He holds a bachelor's degree in English literature from UCLA and, uh, and served with F Company 51st Infantry um, as LRSU Airborne Infantry, in, Infantryman in the Gulf War. I had the pleasure of having some conversation earlier, uh, actually last week, with Tim in another type of uh, Google Hangout event. Um, and Tim's a great uh, example of um, of the of successful transition, but also of a company that really is dedicated to finding ways to capturing the veteran population. So, Tim, I'm going to turn it over to you and ask for you to share some of your experiences. Thanks, Brad. Can everyone hear me? Yes. All right. So, as Brad said, my name is Tim Norman, the director of overhead and technology recruiting at DreamWorks Animation. I've had 
LRSU in my in my military unit always gives people. It stands for Long Range Surveillance Unit. So we were a scout, a scout platoon that did uh, surveillance for Seventh Corps during the Gulf War, the first Gulf War. Um, I'm at DreamWorks Animation now. Been here about five years. Currently, we have Crudes in the in theaters. Uh, we have Turbo coming out in the summer, and we've also made Shrek, Kung Fu Panda, How to Train Your Dragon, and the Madagascar series, among others. We've got tons of other films. There's some on my back wall here, if I forgot some. So we have about 2,000 employees, give or take, at two animation studios here in California. Uh, from a skill set perspective, we have a really diverse workforce here. We can hire veterans on the artistic side, can do animation, lighting, modeling, effects. On the film production side, uh, we hire production assistants, producers, director assistants, or associate producers and department managers. Then we have a really robust technology group here that builds and maintains all the technology the artists use. Um, software engineers, help desks, desktop support, asset managers, the wide gamut of IT technologists as well. About 18 to 24 months ago, we started talking about looking for ways to increase our veteran hiring and our veteran outreach. And we've joined, since then we've joined the Got Your Six campaign and are pleased to work with our non our nonprofit partners like Goodwill, uh, like Goodwill Industries and be part of this great event, help welcome home veterans and help ease their transition. Our strategy, real quick, is, is twofold. We want to hire as many veterans as we can. If we can't hire vets, we want to help, help them get hired in, in the entertainment space as much as we can by creating programs and events that help educate veterans on filmmaking, the animated filmmaking pipeline, and the rigors and reality of getting hired in the entertainment space. So uh, we're really excited, and uh, um, let me know if you have any questions later on. Brad, are you there? Great. Thanks, Tim. Um, so uh, before we – yeah, I'm here. Um, I had to take my uh, mic off mute. Um, so as a uh, – before we – we transition to the next speaker. Uh, just as a quick question for you, um, yeah, I, I, as both someone who uh, who is a veteran and then as a, a recruiter that looks for veterans, um, what uh, just at a uh, at a at a high level, you know, as veterans think about you know translating their experience over from what they did during active duty, um, at, what advice or suggestions might you give to um, to the you know, somebody that's just coming out, has just gotten home, has begun to think about how do I even cr begin to craft a, a resume or a story uh, that's useful to uh, an employer? What are you looking for out of a military resume? You know, somebody that's been in the service. What are you looking for out of a resume that helps you know? Yeah, this is somebody that I can really. Um, I can see what their talents are um, and see how that fits into what we want for our business. Sure. Sure. So from a very pragmatic level, I want a resume. And, you know, when you get your resumes out there, you're going to be competing with hundreds or thousands of other resumes. And, and recruiting managers and hiring managers look very quickly at resumes because we have to move on. Right, so we're super busy. We have a lot of resumes coming in. So you have about 10 to 15 seconds on your resume to really make sure that a recruiting manager or someone in human resources digs deeper into the resume, please make sure the resume is logical and that it makes sense. Um, I would avoid, uh, I would avoid, I, I don't mind and we don't mind if it's more than one page, but make sure that the resume talks about re relatable skills as you see, as you see those skills relating to a particular position and particular specialty. You don't want to talk about necessarily um, things that you want to do, you want to talk about things that you have done with practical examples in, in a very bullet, bullet, bulleted format. So you did this utilizing these skills and it resulted in this, in this result. Be very logical. Get me really wrapped up in your current experience and how you see that that's going to translate into the real world. Great. Thanks, Tim. So now we're going to turn it to, um, uh, to James Lander and Ruth Eiffel. Uh, both James and Ruth, Ruth are my colleagues at Goodwill Industries International, um, and they are they work in our portfolio that focuses on providing services to and creating opportunity for the the veterans community and the military spouse community. Uh, James uh, serves as our Veterans and Military Families Family Services Program Manager here at GII. He's a Gulf War veteran 
and was recalled to active service after 9-11, uh, 2001, in support of Operation Iraqi and Enduring Freedom. Uh, he is now a retired officer, has ascended to the rank of commander during his service, and completing more th has completed more than 25 years of combined active and reserve experience. Um, Ruth Eiffel uh, is uh, Good Blue Shoots International's vested in veterans program manager. Uh, she leads GII's efforts uh, to reskill and retrain our heroes and their families, helping them to obtain market value credentials and family sustaining careers. As the spouse, daughter, and sister of veterans, her passion for an investment in this community is truly significant. Ruth received her pa Bachelor of Business Administration in marketing from Howard University. So James and Ruth, talk some about uh, Goodwill Industries International um, and Goodwill's commitment to the veterans population, uh, both an employer and as a service provider, helping people successfully make that transition. James and Ruth? Thank you, Brad. Goodwill Industries International has uh, a long history serving veterans and military families uh, as far back as World War II. And now, uh, post 9/11, with so many veterans and military uh, veterans and military families returning from active service after uh, our two longest uh, conflicts, two two of our longest standing conflicts ongoing, uh, we have at Goodwill Industries International focused and dedicated uh, efforts to serve this targeted population. And as part of uh, our efforts, we have focused on workforce development. We have focused on uh, health and wellness. We have focused on skills gap. And we have focused on uh, ensuring that our veterans and military families have the uh, transitional support uh, in a coordinated effort with other nonprofits to ensure that we can provide the best services for them. And, uh, uh, Ruth, I guess you can talk a lot about the uh, the skills attainment piece. So Goodwill um, is initiate has initiated a skills attainment approach to bringing veterans home. We are triangulating businesses, Goodwills, and nonprofit organizations in various communities to work together to help veterans and military families, um, spouses, children, help them to get retrained um, and get them back to work quicker so that they can get. Uh, so that it can obtain family sustaining wages. Our, our goal is not to just get veterans into a job or get military spouses um, or dependents into a job, but to get them into a job uh, with the skills that they need that will help them to pay their bills, that will help them send their kids to college, that will help them um, start down a career path where they can stack their credentials, obtain uh, uh, one credential after, after another, stack them together to produce um, a new career for themselves. Well, thank you, James and Ruth. So, um, you know, Goodwill as a, um, is an interesting sort of an organization in that it has the opportunity to be able to create employment opportunities um, as well as provide services. Um, can you guys talk just a little bit uh, before we transition to our next speaker? Uh, Talk about the, the scale of Goodwill in terms of its ability to create opportunities for, uh, for the veterans community and the, and the military spouse community. Uh, yes. <clears throat> for those of you who aren't familiar, Goodwill is more uh, elaborate uh, resources than our uh, retail uh, storefronts. Goodwill has 158 organizations across the uh, continental United States. We're in every community across the country. And so uh, Goodwill is uniquely positioned because we are a service provider to veterans and military families. And we also are an employer. So we understand the risk and the return on investments that businesses look to um, receive each and every time they bring on qualified uh, employees. As a service provider, um, Goodwill has uh, been one of the leading uh, nonprofit organizations uh, for uh, Michelle Obama's, First Lady Michelle Obama and Dr. Jill Biden's uh, joining forces efforts. Since 2011, April, 
to uh, April of uh, 2013, Goodwills across the country have hired more than 1,700 uh, veterans within the Goodwill organization across the country, and we have served uh, veterans and military families more than 99,000. That includes um, uh, veterans who have uh, found employment through Goodwill organizations and family members who have found employment through Goodwill organizations. And that includes all of the uh, transitional support that may be needed to get them to the next step. Uh, resume writing, uh, uh, skills translation, um, uh, benefits, ensuring that veterans and military families have the benefits they need as they transition off of active duty, that they have housing. Uh, those are the things that are critical uh, and have to be in place in order to facilitate a, uh, career uh, opportunities for veterans and military families. Right. Thanks, James. So uh, now we're going to turn to um, Amy Gravett. Amy, um, I, welcome. We're glad to have you today. Um, Amy is the Vice President of HBO Entertainment for uh, Home Box Office, uh, responsible for the development and production of scripted comedy programming for the network, um, and that includes the current series, uh, Veep, Eastbound and Down, and The Newsroom, um, as well as past series, Hung, Bored to Death, Entourage, uh, The Life and Times of Tim, and The Ricky Gervais Show. Um, and just as an aside, um, I love Veep and The Newsroom, so keep those going. <laughs> They're fabulous. Um, uh, so uh, upcoming projects include uh, Family Tree, Hello Ladies, and an untitled uh, Mike Judge pilot. Uh, prior to HBO, Amy spent several years in the U.S. Navy, rising to the rank of lieutenant. Uh, she began her career in entertainment in Section 8, uh, which is a George Clooney <coughs> and Steven um, Soderbergh's production company. Gravit joined HBO in May of 2004. So, Amy, thank you for your service to our country. Um, and can you talk some just about uh, you know, HBO and its commitment around creating employment opportunities for uh, the veteran community? Sure. Um, you know, we have a long tradition of hiring veterans. Our uh, former CEO was one himself. And um, I, I actually uh, <laughs> thought I was talking a little bit more about my story than what our our infrastructure is vis-a-vis -vis hiring veterans. Well, but, and you can yeah. you can absolutely. I think your career path can maybe demonstrate uh, for our you know for the folks that are participating in the hangout, sort of how you came about your opportunity, um, and then you know found a place uh, that that was welcoming and had a culture where you felt yes. like you could really thrive as a veteran. Um, sure. No, I am now, you know, solidly, um, it's been about 14 years since I got out of the Navy, and so I, I am solidly in my second career, and obviously when I say uh, to people in the entertainment industry that I used to be in the Navy, they their first question is, how did you make that transition? And I did, I mean, it, both paths were very similar. I sort of started at the bottom. And when I got out of the Navy, I started as an intern at, uh, at the production company. And because I knew how to work a solid day, uh, I got promoted very quickly to assistant and then uh, moved over to HBO and worked as an assistant here. And again, it was just sort of knowing how to be part of a lar larger organization, knowing how to get the job done. When I was in the Navy, I was the dispersing officer, so I was the banker <coughs> on an aircraft carrier. Um, and in a way, the office job uh, very easily translated to the tasks that I had to do here, working well with others, getting the larger job done. Um, and everybody has been not only accepting of my military experience, but enthusiastic about it and excited to have somebody with a different background. I mean, I think that's something that isn't uh, necessarily mentioned a lot when you're talking about hiring and that sort of thing, but that sort of diversity of experience is something that brings new ideas to an organization uh, that, that are very valuable. It's a different way of thinking. So thank you. Uh, I mean, I think that's, you know, what you talk about, what you identify are some of those things that um, you know, the, 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 the technical skills oftentimes may, may have felt limiting, but I think what's, what's significant from your story is you know, your ability to understand, you know, the, the, the transit, uh, um, 
uh, the transitional skills that you were learning and, and executing as a part of military service, those skill sets had application in the civilian marketplace. Um, and, and being willing, and I think another thing that you said was, that was really sort of striking was, you know what, I started, I, I began at a certain point, and I built. And then I started exactly. over, you know. Yeah. Um, had, you know, I started in on the ground level. Um, and then rose, rose quickly, but still went through that process. Um, and I think that's one of those things that that's an important lesson um, uh, in, in working with and being engaged with the veteran population is that you know sometimes there is going to have to be that sort of start over opportunity, um, and no, you know, and being able to say from my past experience, I was able to do this really well. Um, if I leverage that effectively, I can create opportunity for myself down the road. Um, and it certainly sounds like your experience has done that. So thank you, Amy. I really appreciate that. Of course. Um, so we're going to uh, we're going to shift now um, to Carl Walker. Uh, Carl um, is a, a veteran um, and is being uh, is connected with the Goodwill um, in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Carl was referred to uh, Goodwill of North Georgia by uh, the Department of Veterans Affairs uh, Vocational Rehabilitation and Employment Program, or BRNE. Uh, Carl began his work at a Goodwill store where he was soon hired as the lead facilitator, giving people uh, tours of their facility. A year later, he was promoted again to be the assistant manager of another store. Um, and today, he works as a job coach at the Career Center where his journey began, helping uh, change, people li change people's lives through the power of work. So, Carl, why don't you tell us a little bit about your story um, and how you've uh, mapped your career uh, or your second career? Um, and, uh, and, and so to a degree sort of continued your service uh, but maybe in a little bit different way. So Carl, let's hear from you. Well, hello everyone. Can you hear me, Brad? You're all good. Thank you, Carl. Good. Okay. Well, briefly, uh, I am a United States Marine. I spent time in Vietnam and as you said, uh, I ended up at Goodwill and I do have a new title. Goodwill started a program called Vet Success, so I am the outreach coordinator for Vet Success. And Vet Success was a program started by Goodwill to reach out to the veterans who have, uh, I guess you would say, fallen through the crack. These are veterans who have uh, documented disabilities but are not eligible for benefits through the VA. So Vet Success is a job readiness program. So we recruit the veterans who have fallen through the crack. We recruit them. It's a job readiness program. We work with a lot of homeless veterans out there. Not unlike the new veterans who are transitioning from the military, which a lot of them are going to the schools. So a lot of veterans like me, Vietnam veterans, and first Gulf War veterans. So what we do, we recruit these veterans. We get them in the job readiness program, which is a paid program. And the outcome of the program is to find these veterans' jobs and to make them productive citizens again. You still there with That's me, Brad? It. Yep, I had to click off my mute button. So, because oh, okay. um, I'm, I'm muting in between, so I make sure that any background noise here in my office uh, doesn't disrupt uh, the important information that's coming. So, um, as you work with, uh, you know, as a part of this new strategy uh, with Vet Success, um, t you know, what are some of the things, Carl, that you see, um, um, maybe some of the some of the the most frequently identified sort of challenges that uh, veterans that you're working with or that you do outreach to, what are they struggling with, um, and what do you see most often present that has that really needs focusing on, uh, in order to lead to a successful transition into the civilian workforce. One of the biggest challenges that I see a lot here, especially in the metro Atlanta area, uh, a lot of veterans are struggling with being homeless and having uh, substance abuse issues and mental health issues. So me being a veteran myself, I'm also a life member of the Disabled American uh, Veterans Organization. I'm a service officer, so um, I'm affiliated with a lot of different organizations, such as the, uh, the VA regional office. So I'm in contact with the homeless program, also the mental health program. So I have what they call a veterans roundtable every Thursday at my Buford Highway location. 
The Veterans Roundtable is an information networking session where veterans come in and we sit down. It's an open, <coughs> uh, open forum where we talk about a little bit of everything. So if a veteran is, is in a homeless situation, I can point him or her in the right direction to get help or if they need help with the substance abuse program or mental health issue program. I meet a lot of veterans that are not even in the uh, VA medical system, so I direct them on how to get their medical ID card or even how to get their medical records. So the biggest area is, is homelessness and mental health issues. Well, thank you, Carl. I, it's a, they're significant issues and have to be able to be addressed in order to you gotta get that stuff in, uh, you know, dealt with and, and responded to in order to plant a solid foundation for successful transition um, into civilian life. So thank you for your service. Uh, to our country and to your service to goodwill. We appreciate that. Um, continuing that pathway along the lines of sort of, you know, the service to goodwill, um, I want to introduce some folks from, from the Good Ministries of Houston um, uh, for them to talk some about uh, their experience. Um, Shirley Smith uh, is a female homeless veteran um, who's a single mother of two daughters. Uh, they're currently in college. Uh, Shirley is an Army veteran. That has extensive administrative counseling and customer service skills. She has a bachelor's degree in human uh, family and human development and a master's degree in counselor education. Uh, Shirley is very focused and dedicated, uh, is, a, is a very focused and dedicated individual and is definitely fighting to change her current status and to move herself to a point of sustainability. Um, Ala Johnson um, is another veteran uh, that's connected with our Google there in Houston. Um, uh, was recently released from the military. Uh, he moved to the Houston from North Carolina, uh, with, uh, and with him is his fiance and small son, who is seven years old. Uh, since moving to Houston, uh, things have been quite hectic for Mr. Johnson, uh, but he's driven to succeed. Um, he has extensive call center experience and customer service uh, experience as well. Uh, he has a desire uh, to star in plays and movies. Uh, so we got the HBO and DreamWorks thing going on. Maybe something might come of this. Who knows? You know, um, Mr. Johnson. Johnson uh, can also sing. Uh, he's been networking to find success in Houston um, in all areas he's interested in working. And then finally, Indira Miller, uh, his wife and mother that came to Goodwill with her husband, Wesley Miller, uh, who is also a veteran. Uh, the Millers uh, were homeless and moved to Houston from Hawaii. Uh, the Millers have secured housing, and Wesley uh, went to work um, and after a, temporary, a temporary job, and after it ended, um, he's now actively searching for another job. Indira Miller uh, has been offered a job uh, by the VA hospital and she is waiting uh, for all of her paperwork to be processed uh, to begin working. Uh, through the Goodwill of Houston SSVF program, the Millers have sustainable housing and are getting assistance with car repairs. Their two daughters are in school um, and they're on the path to success. So um, our good colleagues here in Houston, uh, why don't you guys share some of your experience, um, uh, what brought you to Goodwill, um, and uh, you know, out of you know, I gave a little bit of detail, but maybe just you know, some of the some of the insights that you would offer to uh, other veterans uh, that are are uh, addressing the challenge of finding civilian work head on. What would your advice be for them? Hi, I'm Shirley Smith. How are you? Um, I think, well, let me tell you how I, I ended up coming to uh, Goodwill pretty much by accident. Uh, I tried uh, a couple of more programs that and I really didn't fit in anywhere, and uh, I just happened up at Goodwill. And um, I, I, th I would recommend Goodwill to any veteran. I mean, anybody. This place has just been awesome to me, and I, I, I couldn't do without them. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, somebody else. Um, hi, my name is Ava Page, and I came to Goodwill by accident as well. I went to the Workforce Commission for a job interview, and I didn't get the job, but I did get a connection to to my caseworker down here, and they have helped me a lot. I came from Louisiana because of uh, domestic violence situation. Um, currently homeless, but thanks to Goodwill, I'm in the process to get in my new house, and they have helped me a lot. And I would definitely recommend it to anybody. Mm -hmm. 
Hey, everybody, my name is Wesley Miller. I was actually, uh, <clears throat> I moved to Houston in January. I was referred over to this Goodwill by one of the VA reps over at Workforce Solutions. And uh, they've been a great help. And, um, as far as advice goes, I strongly advise any uh, newly released members from the military, any new vets, work on those resume skills. It seems to be all about skill words now. And be persistent. The living world is vicious. And um, that, that was a huge eye-opener for myself as well as my wife when we got out of the military. Uh, the civilian world is vicious right now. It's a lot of competition. So just be persistent, keep your head up, and work on those resumes. That's it. Great. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Well, let, let's, um, let's shift our conversation a little bit, um, and we're going to open it up for some sort of general questions. Um, and let's start with uh, the uh, participants in the Hangout that are uh, our employers. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I, Jim, I, I skipped right over you, didn't I? I'm so sorry. There's, I, <laughs> sorry, Jim. Um, I, I'm looking through my, my, my run of show, and I'm like, oh, and I'm at the point of questions, but I'm not, because I need Jim. I want you to talk. <laughs> uh, so this uh, Jim waved to everybody, so they can know that I haven't uh, forgotten you. There he is. Jim, so uh, Jim Decker's a uh, formerly homeless um, veteran who recently transitioned out of Goodwill's uh, Homeless Veterans Reintegration Program, uh, which is a Department of Labor funded program. Uh, Jim overcame a sudden and startling ordeal with homelessness um, after depending on uh, an untrustworthy family member to support his transition to civilian life. Um, Jim had found himself uh, in a situation where um, his possessions had been uh, stolen, bank account had been emptied, and there was nowhere uh, to sleep on a winter's night in South Dakota, which is not a good place to be. Um, after struggling for a long, uh, for some time, he found his way to Goodwill's HBRP program, connected with a motel owner who saw saw his potential and is now employed, housed, and back on his feet. So, uh, Jim, uh, tell us some about what your uh, what your story is. Uh, again, I apologize. But let's let's hear some of your story about um, your transition and the, and the path that you've been on, and then maybe go ahead and, and think about the the connection that you would give then out of your experience to other veterans um, as they transition, either to maybe um, st you know to avoid some of the obstacles um, that you had to overcome, um, or or um, you know things that. You know the lessons learned from your experience, so that somebody else doesn't have to to, to go through that as well. So, Jim, tell us a little bit about your story. Okay, thank you, Brad. Actually, I enjoyed uh, listening to you talk, Brad. So, don't worry about passing over me. <laughs> 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 uh, anyway, good afternoon, everybody. Um, yes, I um, last uh, May I actually moved to. Um, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Um, I actually came here. Um, my father had recently passed away, and my uncle has, was actually a home builder here for 35 years. He had been retired at that time in uh, Arizona, but he asked me if I'd be interested in maybe getting into landscaping design because he knew I loved doing that. Um, my background is actually retail management. I uh, managed uh, souvenir stores for a company out of Boston um, for over 15 years. So landscaping it's just something I always enjoyed. Um, I moved here uh, and I actually moved in with my cousin um, who me and her were close our whole lives and always got along and she is just recently coming off a divorce and um, she's actually a nurse here um, in Sioux Falls and very professional and successful as I thought. Um, anyway um, I uh, Got through the summer. Uh, it was actually a pretty good summer. I learned a lot. Learned a lot, and I was just starting to kind of build my own little business. Um, I, li I loved the independence, and I made one pretty good connection. Um, the season ended for me uh, mid-December because uh, obviously it's winter. Winter starts, uh, and all my work was complete. I had a wonderful Christmas with my cousin. My uncle was back in town for Christmas. Um, my mother had already been deceased before my father had passed away. That 
was part of my family that I didn't mention. Um, but anyway, I um, the only way I found out is I um, I had um, um, spare cash that I always kept in an envelope in my um, um, sock drawer. Uh, currently living with my cousin, and I was just in the process of actually finding a place of my own. She wanted to give me time um, to kind of get to know the area and take my time to see where I wanted to live, and I had found that. I currently just sold my car because I was in the process of getting a truck because I wanted to be ready for the following season. Um, anyway, I was going to run an errand that particular day. I opened up the envelope and um, there it was a pretty good sum of money in there. And, and I'd been meaning to get to the bank and put it away, but I hadn't done it. But anyway, it was gone. Um, so I knew there was a problem. Um, and there was only me or her, me and her living in her townhouse at the time. So there was no boyfriends or girlfriends, so nobody coming in and out. It was just me and her. So I knew I was totally stunned, and I just assumed she hadn't told me yet. She had maybe needed to borrow it. And the, the furthest thing from my mind was her actually stealing that money. And as you'll hear, it gets worse. Um, I confronted her that evening. She basically... Um, could not believe that I confronted her and accused her of something like that. She told me to get out. Um, I was not on the lease. Um, I didn't want the police. <laughs> I just thought, fine, I'll go. And I really thought, just give it 24 hours, everybody can calm down and cool down. And I thought she would finally talk to me about if she has a problem to discuss it with me. I packed what I could uh, and I started walking that day, um, that evening, actually, snowing. And I couldn't, I realized as I was going through the back roads, I realized I gotta be, I have to look horrible carrying it. What's this guy carrying a suitcase and walking down the street for? So I knew I couldn't go out on the main road. I didn't want the police to stop me or people basically to look at me. Um, but I knew I had to get a room that, that evening. I took my suitcase and I actually hit it behind two pine trees in a pine tree kind of alleyway where it was more an open field, so to speak, with the pine trees. I went to get my hotel room as I walked down 41st Street, one of the main streets here, and I knew the hotels were just down the road. Uh, I presented my debit card and it was declined and I knew there's a major problem. There was plenty of money in there for a room. Um, that evening, um, I remember walking past a lawn. I couldn't think of where to go. Um, that evening, I walk, remember walking past a laundromat, and I stayed there that night, and I called my account 800 number on the back of my card. She had base. I didn't know at that time, but she had basically wiped me out. Um, two different checks um, that she had forged in some withdrawals. Um, and it had only been a little over a month that she was able to do this. And I I was even wondering that night, thinking, where, you know, I was wondering where my, I was waiting for a bank statement. And I, every time, um, even if I had to go and get something, my card would go through. I just, and I would always document my information. Um, I never suspected it or had ran into a problem earlier to, to catch her. So Jim, how did you how did you out of that connect with connect with Goodwill um, and their HVRP program? So well anyway I, I ended up um, I ended up one evening um, th at the end of that week I had to go to the uh, I had no choice my feet had gotten so bad from um, the weather and I couldn't keep them dry and I had ended up going to the VA and they actually had to turn me away because I didn't have a VA card. I never, my jobs, I always had my health insurance and benefits through my job. I, so they had no idea who I was. So I walked uh, a few more blocks down to the main hospital here, Sanford Hospital, and the wonderful emergency doctor there called and got me in a mission. Um, and after um, arriving in the mission, uh, two days after arriving, two VA representatives 
nurses came there to actually talk to any homeless veterans that had questions or health issues. They in turn, I approached him, they in turn um, got me in touch with the VA. My representative then got me in touch with a gentleman named Jared who uh, works on employing um, homeless veterans and he introduced me in 24 hours he had me here at Goodwill. Oh that's uh, great. Yep. That's great. I did my well, intake with Teresa and the following day I was working here at Goodwill. And I tell you, um, it's only 20 hours a week, but I'll tell you, those four hours a day gave me my life back. Well, Jim, thank you for your service, and I'm glad that Goodwill was able to be there for you um, and that you've become a part of, of the compelling story that is Goodwill. Um, I, so it's uh, I, your story is one that I think, um, unfortunately, uh, there are too many, too many veterans in our country um, who, though their story may not be exactly like yours, um, they face homelessness for a variety of reasons. Um, and your, yours is a story of, of, uh, of opportunity reclaimed um, and, and vision born anew. So thank you for sharing that with us. Um, hopefully there's somebody in the Hangout today who either is in a similar circumstance or has come from that place or know somebody um, and will be compelled to act and to connect them with resource. So, um, you know, I, out of that, uh, I want to, um, and it's, it's, it'll be, it, it's like a hard shift from going from fourth gear down to second gear because that was, uh, you know, your, your story is so compelling, uh, Jim. But I do want to shift uh, real quickly. Uh, I know that um, uh, our original hangout time was scheduled to conclude around 1.45 if there are those of our panel uh, are involved in the Hangout that needs to hop off, we understand. Um, if you could give us about 10 more minutes, we've got a couple more questions to throw, throw out there um, uh, for people to respond to, but we understand if you need to go. Um, for the employers that are on uh, on the Hangout, um, you know, one of the things that I'd ask, um, just sort of a general high-level high question is, um, what qualities do veterans possess that make them ideal candidates for employers? So out of reflecting out of your own experience or um, as a hiring agent, uh, what are those qualities that veterans possess that make them ideal candidates uh, for, for employers? And anybody can pick up and go. Just make sure you take yourself off mute. Can you guys hear me? Yes, Tim. All right. The weather's weird here, so I think there's some network connectivity issues. But uh, to answer to your question, I think there's there's three really there's three qualities that I've identified. Veterans are used to surprises, and in the entertainment world, there are lots of surprises in front of the camera, behind the camera, in the corporate office. Cha things change very quickly without warning. We have a lot of very type A people in charge that. Are really great visionaries, and they expect us to be able to. Excuse me, let me get that light. They expect us to uh, change thing, uh, handle change, and I think vets do a really good job of handling change, uh, handling change positively. I think uh, vet, secondly, I think vets have a lot of experience accomplishing challenging tasks without the right equipment or enough personnel. So ability to solve the, uh, solve problems with limited resources, and I think thirdly. Um, veterans have been in many times have been in really stressful and anxiety-ridden uh, situations where they need to remain grounded and calm. Very chaotic situations, chaos. Amy, you might disagree with this, but I don't think so. Chaos reigns in entertainment, and so an ability to remain calm and focused among that chaos. I think veterans also uh, really excel at that, and and they're proactive. A lot of times. Veterans can see problems and start identifying strategies and solutions to solve those problems prior to the problems arising. And I think managers and, and, and folks really appreciate that about veterans. Thanks, Tim. Amy, did you have something you wanted to add? I yeah, I think I, I think I um, <coughs> sorry, I have a little echo here. I mentioned a little earlier. I being part of a larger organization, I think, is uh, 
knowing what that takes and that it's not about you as an individual, it's about some larger entity is something that's extremely valuable. You don't get that um, sense of something larger from people coming out of school or what have you. And so I think somebody who knows how to move a larger mission forward is obviously a great asset to any company, uh, you know, and it's something that people coming out of the military possess like no other. Thank you, Amy. Um, you know, the, uh, I, the, the problem-solving skill set, uh, the responsiveness, um, I, the that idea the connected to the bigger bigger picture uh, the bigger mission I think that's really compelling Amy uh, thank you both uh, Amy and Tim um, for our for the the folks who are uh, veterans who are being served by goodwill that are part of the hangout I you know I, what um, I think we got a little bit of this in some of the story that you guys have already offered but what do you think you know where where would you where would you be now if if not for the interaction and the connection with Goodwill? Uh -oh. I'll take that. I'm Shirley Smith again. Honestly, I'd probably probably be somewhere under a bridge because my experience with um, homelessness that uh, it reaches back like a couple of years. And I, uh, when I first moved, well, let me back up a little bit. I lost my job in Kansas City, Missouri because the company uh, was closed down because the guy came in and took all the funds. And uh, I came here uh, and I lived in a shelter with my oldest daughter. And I'm tell it was an experience. And I know had I not run into, into goodwill, I honestly do believe I would be under a bridge because me and the shelter just didn't get along. Even though I'd never got any trouble or anything, it, was, it just wasn't me. And since I've been here with goodwill, I mean, it's just been, I mean, honestly, heaven compared to what I've been through. Thanks, Cheryl. You're welcome. Anybody else? Hey, Brad, uh, Carl. Oh, go ahead, Carl, and then we'll come, we'll come back. And, and, uh, <laughs> hey, Carl snuck in there right before you, uh, Wesley, so go let Carl go, and then, and then we'll have Wesley. Yeah, well, I'll be quick because uh, right before I – the VA sent me to Goodwill. I had my own business, and um, uh, I went I went out of business because of my military disability, which is my knees and my back. And I was unemployed, and my youngest son had just started college, and I didn't have no idea how I was going to be able to afford that. So when the VA sent me to Goodwill, and I didn't have no idea why I was coming to Goodwill because I didn't know nothing about Goodwill. So it was really truly a blessing. To, to start over at the age of 54. So Goodwill was a blessing mm. to me, and I just want to say that. Mm. Thank you, Carl. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Wesley, you were going to hop in there? Yeah, um, what, what I was going to say is that Goodwill helped expedite things, I mean, so much further. I, I, I won't go out and say if it wasn't for Goodwill, I, I would have just given up. I don't believe Shirley, uh, Miss Shirley would have been under a bridge because yes, so we <laughs> We're, we're designed to push ourselves further. But what Goodwill did do for us was get so many different, you know, outlets and bring it under one roof so that when people do feel overwhelmed, they, they can come here and speak and vent. There's not many times where you can vent, especially when you're talking to another vet, because even though we understand each other's issues, it's like, yeah, so what? Like, I've been deployed. There's, you know, and it's... But to actually have somebody to sit there and listen to and get direction sometimes, which which uh, I know personally, I wasn't used to actually getting direction because in the Marine Corps, it's like, this is what you're supposed to do. Go get it done. And um, But when you come to, to Goodwill, it takes so much stress off of your shoulders that it does allow you to venture out and, and enjoy life a bit more while handling your business. So I, I do feel... Goodwill did improve my quality of life by taking away a lot of the stress and um, from just, you know, hitting the streets and having to hustle every day, day in and day out, helping with the, with my daughters. You know, my daughters love coming here, Miss Rolanda, Mrs. Z. It's like, it's like a, a, it's a family, you know, it's, it's a really, it really is a family environment. And that's how I feel Goodwill helped out. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thank you. Um, so our last question, you guys have been gracious with your time. Um, so for those who are connected to, you know, that are Goodwill employee types and working with the veteran population, um, how can a veteran or military family member 
find out about Goodwill services uh, that are offered near them? Because I know uh, each Goodwill offers a little bit different things in different communities. So, so how can how can a, a veteran or family member find out uh, what's available in their community? Well, Brad, uh, really appreciate that question. One of the things that I would uh, encourage and urge uh, veterans all over the country uh, to do is to go online uh, and find the nearest Goodwill to you uh, by putting in your zip code and uh, connecting with the resources in your community. Uh, as I mentioned previously, uh, Goodwills are in every community across the country. And it's not just the retail stores. There are workforce development uh, opportunities. There are jobs at Goodwill. And there are uh, resources to help veterans transition so that they can secure uh, career sustaining employment. Um, you don't have to fight this battle on your own. Goodwill is here to uh, support you, to encourage you, to motivate you uh, to achieve your dreams uh, of civilian employment the same way we were there for one another as, as veterans and military family members uh, on active duty. And I applaud uh, uh, Amy and Tim and Carl and, and the folks down in Houston and, and, and I really do think that um, it is necessary for us to have these conversations to let folks know that uh, uh, we all are struggling. This is a tough economy. This is a tough time. And, and uh, we, we need to lean on one another and, and, and give each other a hand up because uh, uh, I was employed uh, with Goodwill because uh, someone believed in me. And, and as in with, with Ruth, and, and other uh, veterans employed with Goodwill, uh, we want to make sure that you have the network and you have the uh, access to folks like Tim and Amy who, um, if not for Goodwill, we wouldn't be connected to them right now. But uh, maybe at some point I, I uh, uh, give Tim a call and, and we connect him with veterans on the West Coast and, and let him know that these folks need help. So uh, thank you for that question, Brett. Right. Well, I want to thank everybody um, that's participated in our Hangout today, um, to Tim and Amy and Carl and Jim and all our, uh, James and Ruth and all our colleagues uh, that, are, that are making their way in Houston. Uh, thank you for being a part of this experience. Thank you for um, uh, almost, almost everybody on, on, online today. Thank you for your service to our country um, and for uh, your participation in this Google Hangout. Um, hopefully this has been a pleasant experience for everyone that uh, we didn't mute too much badly back and forth. Um, you know, you've still got, uh, I mentioned at the beginning part of our conversation that uh, there's a virtual career fair going on currently that Goodwill International is hosting. Uh, you can, uh, if you're interested in looking for a job, uh, there are employers involved in our virtual career fair today uh, and tomorrow and Wednesday that are looking for veterans, looking for that next great talent. Uh, to add to their employee uh, employee roster, so please visit it at uh, uh, Goodwill. I'm sorry, GoodProspects.Goodwill.org. You'll find a link to take you to the career fair, um, and um, and you can chat with employers today who are looking for good veteran talent. So thank you all, and we're going to sign off now. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye.